this every day to look and feel younger and boost your energy. All right, almost everything I put out into the world via YouTube and my podcast is about how to promote longevity because I want you to look and feel like the youngest version of yourself. Now, how can you do that? Well, it all starts with nutrition. Now, here are some easy things you can eat every day to feel young again. Now, one of the things you see on the Internet over and over and over again is collagen. And collagen is actually one of the most abundant proteins in our body, and it's absolutely the best protein for hair, skin, and nails. It's recently become a health trend, as you can see. You can't not turn on YouTube and see something promoting bone broth or collagen. Most people associate collagen with bone broth. But little did you know, you actually don't need that bone broth to get collagen into your diet. One of the most interesting things, fun facts, is your body doesn't break down collagen and absorb it as collagen. It's broken down into individual amino acids and then is absorbed through the wall of your gut. And believe it or not, there's not an assembly manual on the other side of your gut that says, oh, you just ate collagen and please reassemble these various amino acids back into collagen. If you need to manufacture collagen, you'll make it out of the individual amino acids. In fact, there's studies in humans that shows that collagen or bone broth is an actual inefficient way of manufacturing collagen. It's much better to actually take the individual components that make up collagen. Now you may ask, well, what are those components? Well, it turns out that some of the most important amino acids in making collagen are L-lysine, L-proline, hydroxyproline, and L-glycine. Now, it's actually easy to get a lot of these building blocks into your diet without ever coming near bone broth or collagen supplements. Certain root vegetables like leeks and beets are loaded with these amino acids. Most A2 milk products, like for instance Parmesan cheese or goat and sheep yogurts and cheese, have a lot of these amino acids. Avocados, surprisingly, are loaded with L-lysine. And nuts, like pistachios, are loaded with these compounds. And here's another fun one. Hemp seeds are actually rich in most of these compounds. So this is an easy way to get these precursors of collagen into your diet without bone broth or collagen supplements. Now, is there a reason why you don't want bone broth? Two reasons. Number one, these are made from bones, and most people are using beef bones. Beef contains a sugar molecule that I write extensively about called NU5GC. NU5GC is an abnormal protein. We do not make it. We make NU5AC, and there's strong association with NU5GC in cancer and in causing heart disease. So, that's a no-go for me. Now, chicken does not have NU5GC, it has NU5AC, and fish do not have NU5AC. So if you're going to go the collagen route or the bone broth route, please use either fish or chicken, not beef bone broth. That's a contraindication as far as I'm concerned. Same way with college, use fish collagen, marine collagen, rather than any other. The trick, whether you take collagen products, broths, or the individual amino acids, you have to have vitamin C to actually combine all these together into collagen. And as most of you know, most of us are deficient in vitamin C because we don't manufacture vitamin C. So what I recommend is that you take timed release vitamin C, about a thousand milligrams twice a day, and you'll notice how much better your hair, skin, and nails look. On the other hand, 
maybe we should all just start eating more jello. Now, I'm joking about that, but most people actually don't realize that jello is actually gelatin, and gelatin is made from the cartilages and the tendons and the gristle from animals. And that gelatin is collagen. Most of us growing up in the 50s, 60s, and 70s lived on jello. Jello was in everything. We had it every day. Little did we know that we were eating, you know, beef tendons. The second thing we did was we had a lot of consomme, jellied consomme, consomme soup, which was bone broth. So there's a rich tradition up until the last few years, of consuming gelatin and collagen every day. Finally, cheap cuts of beef and pork and chicken, for that matter, have lots of collagen in the gristle, in the connective tissues. Those cheap cuts of meat have to be cooked forever to make them edible, and we broke down the collagen and made it absorbable. So, Rather than having a filet, which basically has no collagen, no amino acids for that, go and have a gristly piece of meat, and you'll be actually much better off. Now, there's another great compound for hair, skin, and nails, both silica and biotin. Now, biotin usually comes in 5,000 or 10,000 micrograms. One warning about biotin. Biotin interferes with a number of blood tests that we often get on a routine basis. So if you're taking a hair, skin, and nail supplement that you can even get at Costco, make sure you stop taking it for at least a week or two before you have any blood draw. That will surprise your doctor and he'll accuse you of having a bad disease. Now, the other thing that we forget about in terms of good health is our skin appearance. And everybody knows that they're supposed to put sunscreen on their skin to protect the skin. Well, what I propose is you should eat your sunscreen. Now, I don't mean go out and eat your sunscreen. That would be really dumb. But what I mean is you need to protect your skin from the inside out with the foods you eat. Sunscreen, unless it is titanium or zinc based, is full of absorbable estrogen hormone disrupting compounds that are extremely bad for you. And unless it's titanium or zinc based, please stay away from sunscreen. On the other hand, vitamin C once again repairs damage to collagen in your skin. So take your vitamin C. If you don't want the extended release capsules, take along some vitamin C tablets. Chew them when you're out in the sun. Polyphenols. Polyphenols are designed by plants to protect their mitochondria from damaging UV radiation. So the more polyphenols you get in your diet, the better off you are. Finally, there's a product called Fern Block, which, as it sounds, comes from a fern polypodium. It's actually been shown in clinical trials to support healthy skin, and it's actually easy to find as a supplement that you swallow every day, particularly if you know you're going to go out and spend a week or so at the beach or expose yourself to a lot of sun. Now, I sound like a broken record, but get prebiotics into your diet. These are friendly foods that feed the probiotics, the gut buddies that are in you. Anything that keeps your digestive wall, the wall of your gut healthy, believe it or not, keeps your skin healthy. The inside of your intestines is just your skin turned inside out. And what happens on the inside of your skin in your gut is reflected on the outside in your skin. And people wonder why I have such glowing skin. It's because the insides of me are glowing. And you can see that 
reflected. So if you want glowing skin, make sure you've got a glowing gut. Finally, you got to have metabolic flexibility. And I talk about this in my last two books. Your cells have, to the, have the ability to switch between burning sugar as a fuel to burning free fatty acids and ketones as a fuel. And sadly, almost none of us have metabolic flexibility. In fact, half of you normal weight people listening right now do not have metabolic flexibility. If you're overweight, 88% of you do not have metabolic flexibility. If you're obese, 99% of you do not have metabolic flexibility. And metabolic flexibility is at the core of having great-looking skin, of having great, healthy skin cells. Finally, as you know, sun spots, age spots, liver spots are not due to sun damage. They're due to advanced glycation end products, ages that are formed from the amount of protein and the amount of sugar or things that turn into sugar you eat that are complexed into these most incredibly awful compounds called advanced glycation end products that end up in your skin. So if you want younger looking skin, reduce the amount of protein you're eating, reduce the amount of sugars you're eating, and by doing that, you will improve metabolic flexibility. The final thing is, the more you shorten your eating window, compress the time you start eating in the morning, and finish eating at night, and don't do late night snacking, the healthier your skin will get, because you'll get more metabolic flexibility. Make sure to check out the next one here. The last thing you want to use is plastic utensils. That plastic, particularly if you're cooking with them, is going to leach into the food and you're going to eat endocrine disruptors.